Hello everyone, we the members of Team A are back with another assignment. So please kindly sit back and enjoy the video. Today we will talk about the Shannon and Weaver model of communication. Initially we all will have this question clicking in our mind that when and how was this model created. So let us now have a short look into the history. Shannon and Weaver model of communication was created in 1948 article A Mathematical Theory of Communication in the Bell System Technical Journal by Claude Shannon and Warren Weaver. This theory later came to be known as the mother of all models because of its worldwide popularity. Shannon was an American mathematician whereas Weaver was a scientist. This model was also known as Shannon Theory because many believe that this theory of communication was mainly developed by Claude Shannon alone and Warren Weaver had a minimal role in it. This mathematical model is more technological than any other linear model. Now let us all see how this model works. The sender encodes the message and sends it to the receiver through a technological channel like telephone and telegraph. The sender converts the message into codes understandable to the machine. The message is sent in codes through a medium. The receiver has to decode the message before understanding it and interpreting it. The receptor machine can also act as a decoder in some cases. The channel can have noise and the receiver might not have the capacity to decode which might cause problems in communication process. Here, for instance, brain might be the sender, mouth might be the encoder which encodes to a particular language, air might be the channel, another person's ear might be the receptor and his brain might be the decoder and receiver. Similarly, air is the channel here. The hocus pocus present in the surrounding environment that disturbs them is nothing but noise, whereas his response is the feedback to the message he received from the sender. Now, let us discuss about the various components present in the model. The very first component that we have is the sender. Sender or communicator is the person who sends a message or an idea. He is the source and initiates the process of communication. Sender can may be a speaker, a writer or an actor. Next in the list we have encoder. Encoder, it is the use of appropriate verbal or non-verbal language for transmitting the message. In order to transmit the idea, the sender translates the idea into a language that is in form of words, symbols, gestures known to both the parties. After encoding the message, it passes through a channel and may encounter some disturbance on its way, that is noise. Channel is the medium or route through which the message is passed on from the sender to the receiver, whereas noise is the physical disturbance which causes hindrance for the message to be delivered to the receiver in a clear and understandable manner. The message sent has to be now decoded. Decoder is the machinery or mechanism used to convert signals or binary data into messages. It can translate the message into words for the purpose of understanding. The receiver can interpret the message only after decoding it in order to derive its meaning. The decoded message has now reached the receiver. Thus, the receiver or the communicator is the person or group who is supposed to receive the message. He may either be a listener, a reader or an observer. Lastly and most importantly, we have the feedback. Feedback is the response or reaction by the receiver. It represents the return flow of communication with the help of feedback the reader can judge the effectiveness of his message. Without it, the process of communication remains incomplete. Now, let us watch an example of Shannon and Weaver model of communication. Hello, Ms. Khosh. We will have a meeting at the office tomorrow at 8 a.m. 
Surely, sir, I will be there, but at what time? At 8 a.m. Sir, your line is not clear. Please, can I beg your pardon? So, here the sender is the businessman, encoder is the telephone network company, the channel is the mobile network, noise is the missing text due to disruption, that is, due to network glitches, the worker was unable to hear the full message. Decoder is the mobile phone of the worker and the receiver is the worker herself. The advantages of Shannon and Weaver model of communication are as follows. Number one, it explains the barriers to effective communication very well. It shows how information is interrupted and helps people identify areas for improvement in communication. Number two, it breaks down communication into understandable paths thereby enabling us to look at the critical steps in the communication of information from the beginning to the end. And number three, it is transferable to multiple situations. Now, coming to the critical analysis of the model, we can say that Firstly, it is more applicable for interpersonal communication rather than group communication and mass communication. Secondly, the receiver plays a passive role in the communication process as the sender plays an active role in sending messages. And lastly, feedback taken from the receiver is considered less important in comparison to the messages sent by the sender. Thank you for watching our video. Hope you all liked it and that it helped you all to gain some valuable knowledge about the Shannon and Weaver's model of communication.